Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at RIA with what I believe to be one of the most beautiful pistols ever made. This is a... well, it's either an 1896 or an 1893 Bittner pistol, depending on which source you look at. We'll get into that in a minute. This is... we've been looking at manually operated like ring trigger pistols for a while now, for a week or so, and I've saved the best for last, because that is the Bittner. This is also one of the last of these types of pistols to actually be manufactured and sold, and it's happily one of the very most common of them. Uh, so Gustav Bittner was a gunsmith in Vipert, uh, Bohemia, along with his brother. Um, I believe he moved there, or they opened their gunsmithing shop uh, about 1850. So he was getting fairly elderly by the time he did this pistol. Uh, and he designed it in 1893. It didn't go into production until 1896, and the examples that are known to have come through the Vienna Proof House have uh, proof dates of 1897 and 1898. So that's why the disparity in the dates. It's... you're looking at when it was designed or when it was actually produced. Um, now, mechanically, this is basically just yet a further refinement of the Postler and Seidel system that we looked at several videos back. Uh, however, what Bittner did was actually make it much simpler, uh, much cleaner to manufacture on the inside. And that may be part of why these pistols were actually made in... by the standards of, of ring-trigger manually operated Austrian 1880s pistols, they were made in fairly large numbers. There were several hundred, perhaps as many as four or five hundred of these made, which kind of blows out of the water all of the other models. Uh, so. Let's go ahead and take a look at it up close, and take a look at the inside. I'm going to hold this up so we get the right angle on it, so you can really see the case hardening, because uh, all... basically all of the frame, everything except the barrel, has been case hardened. And oh man, it just looks beautiful, despite my fingerprints being on it. The grips have this really nicely done checkering, both sides of course. And then we have this really cool design element on the front. This is... Uh, functionally, this is a cover for the magazine follower and spring, uh, which is an arm that pivots like this. So they added uh, this metal bracket and two really nice pieces of basically checkered wood paneling uh, to protect and cover that magazine follower. Now, if you haven't been watching the series on these pistols, uh, the basic idea is they are not semi-auto. They are manually operated, but there is a big hefty spring that pushes on the bolt. And you use the ring trigger here to close the bolt, chamber around, and cock it. And then this little guy in the trigger guard is the actual trigger. When you pull that, it'll drop the striker and fire. Uh, for the equivalent to like a revolver single action shooting, you can do that and then fire with your index finger. There's a little checkered pad to give you some grip on the ring trigger. If you want the equivalent of double action firing, you simply pull the ring back with your finger in it, and as soon as the bolt is closed and locked, your finger will hit the trigger and fire automatically. We have a notch sight on the back here that is adjustable. It's got settings for 50, 100, and 150 meters. So you can just... it's just a friction fit. You just slide that rear notch up. These are chambered for the 7.7 mm Bittner cartridge, which is basically a derivation of 320 short revolver. Um, it is still a black powder cartridge, uh, and it is uh, fed via five-round Monmaker-style end-block clip. So you open the action, put the clip in from the top. This guy is our magazine follower. That's what pushes up on the cartridges. There is a clip release lever right down here. So if you want to take the clip out, just like one of the Monlicker straight pull rifles, for example, uh, you just pop that forward and it will unhook. You can see it right there. There's a little bit of grease in there, so it's a little sluggish. But uh, once you pull that forward, it will allow the clip to come out the top uh, for easy unloading. We have a patent Bittner uh, engraving on the side, and that's pretty much the only marking on the outside of these guns. Now, actually, I should point out, uh, a bunch of them, you will find them with a, a couple of numbers here under the barrel. Uh, and that is typically... that is the sequential number of the gun as it went through the Vienna Proof House, and then the two-digit date code for when it was proofed. 
These are found with 1897 and 1898 proof dates. Uh, and the ser what looks like a serial number is actually that sequential proof house number. So it's not a sequential number of bitners. It is a sequential number of all the guns that came in to be proofed that year. So the actual serial number is on the inside of the gun, which we'll take a look at in just... Well, let's do that right now, actually. We've got these two cover plate screws to take out. With those screws removed, we can then pop the cover plate off. And what we have in here is it's the same mechanical system. So uh, we have a locking lug right there. In fact, I can go one step further. I'll go ahead and take the ring trigger out. One of the things that Bittner did that had not been done by his predecessors... Let's see. There's still spring pressure on this ring trigger, but now the trigger axis is actually machined into the frame. On previous guns, like the, the Rieger and the Postler, the screw that held... Uh, well, the axis for the ring trigger was actually a screw, and it was the same screw that held the cover plate on. So if you took the cover plate off, the whole firing mechanism kind of went sproing, and you had to hold it all in place to put it back together. With this, we now have a solid peg in the frame, for that ring trigger to cycle on. So that's a, that's a nice improvement. And just in general, if you compare this to those other ring trigger pistols, it's, it's a more evolved, more elegant design to machine. So it's a solid chunk of steel uh, with relatively simple machining cutouts made in it. So we can go a little further here. If I pull the trigger down now with the cam slot here taken away, we can pull the bolt out. So we have our striker there. There's a fair bit of grease in this, but uh, firing pin is all the way forward because it's under spring tension there. That's our locking lug, that's our cam pin. Uh, we could take the back end of this off, but I don't want to pull that little screw out. Here's our extractor, a uh, big long extractor that's dovetailed into the side of the bolt. You can see the trigger right here simply pivots on that screw and drops the sear down, which releases the firing pin for it to fire. So internally, pretty darn simple. And you can see the actual serial number right there. This is number 219. Just for kicks, let's go ahead and take the grip panels off as well, because there are two springs inside here. So there we go. The top one is the trigger spring. You can see that flex under the trigger. And the bottom one here is the lever spring. So that spring is going to sit on this surface, flipped around like that, and that pushes on this, which gives leverage to opening and closing the bolt. Note that it is not just finger pressure that actually keeps the gun locked when it's firing. When the ring's all the way back, it pulls this down, which rotates this lug into position, locked up against the frame here. So that's what actually holds the gun closed for safe firing. To me, if there was one pistol that I would be very happy to just hang on the wall as a piece of art in addition to being a functional firearm, it would be the Bittner. I think the combination of the wood checkering, the, the dark wood, the checkering, uh, and the case hardening on all of the main components is just absolutely beautiful. I think the, the styling of it is this fantastic sort of Victorian steampunk uh, design. Uh, they're fantastic. I'd love to have one myself at some point. They are unfortunately, while they're common for ring trigger etc. etc. pistols, uh, they're still pretty rare and quite valuable because I'm not the only one who thinks they're really gorgeous pistols. Uh, these were made only for the commercial market. They never saw a military application. Um, they're all pretty much the same. There are apparently a handful of examples known out there that have slightly longer barrels, presumably ordered custom. And if you wanted, you could also buy one of these in a presentation case. Uh, but beyond that, all the Bittners are pretty much the same. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this chance to take a look at this really very nice example. Um, and thanks for watching all of the other uh, in the videos in this series on the Austrian ring trigger manually operated pistols, which is kind of a mouthful. Anyway, thanks for watching.